everyone. Welcome to the second webinar in our uh, book launch of the Digital and Social Media Marketing second edition. And today's topic is engaging digital channels, effective toolkit in times of crisis. And we have a wonderful panel to join us today. With us, Adil Medin, who is a digital content strategist and she is working uh, for Expo 2020 Dubai. Um, Hadil is a digital uh, strategist. She specializes in content creation and community building. Welcome, Hadil. Thank you. Also, we also have Serena Pascoletto. Serena is a digital marketing manager at uh, Pixar Printing in Italy. Serena has been working in digital marketing and e commerce since. 2013 is now a digital marketing manager for Pixar Printing. Welcome, Serena. Hello, everyone. We also have Carla Dawson. Welcome, Carla. Hello, everyone. Carla is an entrepreneur dedicated to helping B2C and high tech companies grow their revenue through innovation growth, hacking, and uh, value proposition design. And finally, we have Anna Tarabash. Anna is a deputy director at uh, MGB Internship. She is also the assistant professor of marketing at the Jane School of Global Management. Welcome, Hello, Anna. Hello. So just a reminder, uh, our book is based on three strategies, as best known as the Fire Spring. Um, it is based around the channels, the content, and the data, that's where we discuss the content today, we're going to discuss the channels. So we're going to start off with Hadil. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tahir, for the introduction. I hope everyone is doing well and taking very good care of themselves. Um, in any other day, this would have been an on-ground event. And uh, everything is going virtual now, conferences, concerts, and even doctor's appointments. Uh, no one was ready for this. And for... Many people, this lack of face-to-face -face interaction has been very demotivational, especially people that are used to like big organizations and agencies. But there is a bright side to this uh, virtual relationships that uh, we are developing right now. It might sound a bit strange, but um, it has brought us to, uh, closer together. There's just something about a dog barking in the background of your manager's call that at the end of the day, reminds us that you know what we're all the same and we're all in this together and uh, there's just a person behind this with a tie right um when it comes to businesses effective communication is the key to success especially at a time like this so let's talk about some of the technologies uh, and digital channels that uh, businesses are using right now so when it comes to especially for workforce and b2b communication uh, Microsoft Teams and uh, Cisco WebEx are the most popular, especially with lar large org organizations because of the collaboration functionality. There's um, strong video conf conferencing uh, features as well as the chats and you could divide into teams. There's also some cool features like um, it shows that you are busy when you are presenting. It's kind of the equivalent alternative to showing up to your colleague's desk and checking if they're actually there or they're not. Um, but there's also other channels that are more focused on video conferencing that other businesses choose to use. Uh, Google Meets recently made their solution free for everyone to use. And there's Zoom, obviously. Other than its cool virtual backgrounds, it's very, very easy to use. There have been privacy hiccups. So a lot of businesses are not using Zoom for, its, uh, for, for business communication, but brands have found ways to use Zoom for their advantage. So we'll look at how Zoom is being actually used for uh, B2C communication. Chipotle, for example, has, has used Zoom for, uh, by inviting uh, their social media followers uh, to virtual hangouts with their favorite celebrities. So as a marketer, you always have to look at what are the tools available to you. And sometimes the not so obvious ones are the ones that you, are, that you can use for B2B and B2C uh, likewise. Um, when it comes to B2C communications, the most important uh, and most immediate step for all marketers right now is to reevaluate their current media mix um, because of the ever-changing consumer behavior. Have you noticed that in the past few weeks, your shyest friend is doing an Instagram live um, or that your not-so-active friends are all tuning into a yoga class in the evening? Well, 
basically that's what I'm talking about. It's about the ever-changing uh, consumer behavior. Facebook used to be something for your parents and Instagram for lifestyle photos, but right now it's all about um, activities and being engaged with people and making sure that you have that kind of connection. So for marketers right now, it's extremely important to revisit your content strategies um, and uh, and especially focus on the live streaming feature where people are tuning into more live type uh, live content such as this one. And finally, I want to talk about uh, new B two C channels. Which app has just surpassed two billion downloads and set a record for app installs in a single quarter? And that's TikTok, right? Uh, everyone is talking about TikTok today, and. Uh, we don't know why, so a lot of people don't even know what it was before the pandemic. So why has it become extremely popular? TikTok has, uh, is an escapist social media platform. It's, there's a pure joy in short-term entertainment right now. And the average user is spending at least 60 minutes a day and it sucks you in as soon as you open it. It's like a full screen experience with like amateur videos of lip syncers, but with a variety of audience right now, you have a much, much bigger educational kind of content and business related content. So TikTok might be a new platform for other businesses and an opportunity for lots of marketers to work on. And finally, I, uh, finally, I, it's what's really interesting about TikTok is that you don't actually have to have a channel to run to run uh, the, your brand there. You can use ads um, and uh, challenges that are branded so that you don't have to use all your resources, especially with businesses having limited resources today. Well, I, I'd like to leave everyone with this comic uh, by this uh, great marketing uh, cartoonist, Tom Fishburn. The main message here is that, yes, Digital transformation is our top priority right now for all marketers and businesses around the world. But make sure you have clarity on exactly what you're doing. I did mention Zoom. I mentioned TikTok. But make sure that what you're doing is effective and a good communication tool for your uh, business and brand. And thank you so much. Thank you very much for that, Hadil. So just to summarize, uh, Hadil mentioned the consumer behavior uh, changing in these challenging times and also highlighted the revamping, if you like, of the social media platforms such as Facebook by younger people and the usage of TikTok, which was not previously heard of so much, but uh, it has really taken off in this time. So we're now going to move on to Serena. So I'm going to talk about how we adapted our strategy to these challenging times over the last two months. So um, I work for a company called Pixart Printing. We are an online printing business operating in Europe. And uh, we are part of the Simpress group, uh, which also includes Vistaprint. I'm sure you, you've heard of this company. And um, on our website, you can find plenty of products that you can print and customize from business cards to leaflets, including roll labels and stickers and other marketing materials. Our customers are mainly companies and freelancers, uh, graphic designers, and they turn to us when they have a specific printing need. And because of that, we always focused heavily on performance marketing and pay-per-click advertising in particular. So when uh, COVID-19, um, uh, the, the, the virus hit us, it was the end of February, and the first cases appeared here in Italy. And what we noticed was uh, a marked uh, decrease in overall demand for our products. And um, looking at search queries, we noticed that our users and customers was, were less inclined to buy, but they were rather seeking content and information on our website. So what, what did we do? I would say that this was a defensive strategy at the very beginning because uh, we never experienced something like that before. So the first thing that we did was to decrease our marketing spend across all channels. So this is just a general tip also for companies out there. When facing the first signs of a crisis, it makes sense to decrease your marketing spend. But we also shifted our focus from pay-per-click to other channels like remarketing because we believed it was essential to continue keeping um, and staying top of mind with our users and customers through remarketing. And because of the shift from transactional to informational queries, we continued posting content on our blog and this helped ensure efficiency. But we had to do something. We had to come up with uh, something that was uh, relevant and that would add value to our customers. So we decided to start printing a new product. So we pivoted 
a production line and started printing fabric masks. And because it was the first time we did this, we decided to donate the first 100,000 masks to charity. We, we wanted to let our users and customers know because we did want to help the community. And we thought that the best channel to promote this was social media. So what we did was to convey this message through primarily Facebook and LinkedIn. Why Facebook? Because everyone uh, during the lockdown was on Facebook, including our, our clients. And uh, so this generated an overall positive response with plenty of interactions, comments, shares. And we also saw after a couple of days an uplift in traffic uh, especially direct traffic, organic traffic. So we've seen this increase in branded queries. And now we are, we are also seeing an increase in sales because of this. So our customers and users wanted to know whether they could buy these masks to protect the, themselves and their employees. And because uh, we also expanded our product range to print other products, we also used in this stage SEO. So we optimized our product content. To conclude, what are the lessons that we learned? So first of all, you need to be flexible and responsive because every week we sit down and review our strategies. So this is something that you should also do. So um, things change on a daily basis. So you should regularly review your strategy. Then question your marketing assumptions because what used to work uh, might not work anymore and vice versa. So we we also uh, saw that by running top of the funnel campaigns, um, uh, we experienced, uh, we had this sudden uplift in traffic and sales. And control your marketing spend, but don't suspend it because if you keep investing, even just a little bit during this very challenging times, then you will out you will outperform your competitors when this is over. And uh, last but not least, pivot your business. So just like we did, if you have the means to do it, you should definitely pivot your business um, rather than just pivoting your message. Because uh, all companies now are saying we are in this together, but what really makes a difference is be able to produce something, even a service or product that actually adds value to your customers and addresses their pain point. So that's all from me. Thank you very much, Serena. And to summarize, Serena's presentation was about adapting the digital marketing strategy from a defensive strategy to a reactive strategy in terms of the products that we're making and the printing of the face masks, you know, a, a very good outcome in terms of the current situation. Um, she highlighted uh, that the lesson that learned from this scenario is that be flexible and responsive, but do not suspend your marketing completely, but keep it in control, even though the costs are actually going to be quite high. So thank you very much for that presentation, Serena. We will now move on to Carla. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, Carla. So Carla's presentation is on Blue Jean brand goes 100% digital, a full floor digital transformation project thanks to COVID-19. Over to you, Carla. So um, I'll tell you a little bit what's happening here. We um, we work with a, a blue jean brand that um, 100% of its sales come through shopping centers. And um, they started their digital sales last year. And um, they had an increase in about 30% of sales online last year. And then COVID hit Argentina in March, really, not really in, in February. And um, we have a, a very strict quarantine here in Argentina at the moment. It's extremely strict. I don't know if it's as strict as it is in, um, in other parts of the world, but um, malls are closed. Everything's absolutely closed. And so their sales went to zero. So they, since they already had activated their online um, channels, they tried it selling online. And what they found was that people did buy jeans online, but it just wasn't enough. And the main reason that we found is obviously when we go shopping, we're not really shopping for clothes. We're, we're usually, we go shopping because it brings us an emotional state that we might consider as being happier in control, resolution, progress, opportunity, and pure approval. And when you do this online, you don't really get the same effect. Um, so their sales drop to zero. They have their expenses, obviously, and they need to figure out a really good way of increasing their sales as quickly as possible. So what we've come up with is the following solution. So one of the things that we came up with when we met with management was the fact that um, 
when we go shopping, we're looking for this emotional state. And that's what we actually do when we're buying clothes. And um, we can create that emotional state in a more controlled environment where people feel safer when it comes to the COVID-19. So the ideas that we're discussing with the board at the moment is coming up with a gene truck. So um, at the moment in Latin America, food trucks are the new thing. They're interesting. They're attractive. Um, if everyone, if someone sees a food truck, they find it extremely interesting. So what we did to do, decided to do is come up with a gene truck so that we can um, maybe create the same emotional experience that you do in the mall where you don't feel so comfortable nowadays when we go back to normal or the new normal, right? And we might have a more controlled environment. So we might be able to disinfect the truck where the clothes are every time someone visits it. The person who sells the clothes has been COVID-19 tested and they're COVID-free. Okay, and we have all these things in place and disinfection is constant within the truck. Okay, this is one of the ideas that we're looking for. The other thing that we have done um, with this project that's very radical, at least for what we're doing right now, is the, the traditional supply chain where manufacturer sells to the retailers and the retailers sell to the end consumer is going is being reviewed by the board at the moment. Consumers um, experience the brand, the clothes, and they might not have the right size or the right color. So they can buy it online, but who gets them the, the money from this, right? Is it the person who has a gene truck or is it the brand or is it both? So one of the things that we're also reviewing is the entire monetiz monetization model. And we're actually thinking about going through some kind of commission model with the food for the with the gene truckers. Whoever owns a gene truck might get a commission, they might get a, a margin. We're looking into a hybrid monetization model. Um, and I think that's the interesting thing about this. The company is um, convinced that they can't just close their doors and go bankrupt. So what we're doing right now is creating um, these kinds of solutions and others to see how we can keep the business alive. And that's kind of where we're at. One of the things that I think is key here is that as a fashion brand, um, we've always sold an experience. You know, when we buy clothes, we're not actually buying clothes. It's what the clothes make us feel like. So we feel more beautiful. We feel more empowered. We feel more hip, we feel more sophisticated, but we're almost buying an emotional state. And we believe that this can continue even with COVID-19. And that's the idea kind of that we're presenting here. Thank you very much for your presentation. Just to summarize, Carl has highlighted um, issues and challenges facing a gene manufacturing, a gene company trying to sell genes in these challenging times. And they've come up with a very novel idea of the gene truck taking the genes to the customer. She highlighted also the aspect of the emotional experience when we do our purchases for any kind of product, but in particular genes, and um, how these gene trunks are allowing that to actually make it happen. So thank you very much for that presentation. We will now move on to uh, Anna, Anna Tarabash, and Anna's topic is online shift in media consumption, uh, CSR and social distancing. So over to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Tahir. So I will try to bite the same piece of a cake, but from another side. So ladies before me, they've been talking about what companies they are doing to attract the customers. Um, what we have not spoken about, it is how the mindset of these users, of these internet users across different generation is changing. What you can see and what we are going to experience in the subsequent slide, it is the different types of media consumption across four different groups, Gen Z, Millennials, Gen X, and a baby boomer. So he, here we are having the first comparison and uh, we are just uh, shifting to uh, what changed in the way how the media is currently being consumed by the Gen Z. So the Global Web Index uh, did a research that was then quoted and make more, uh, let's say, broadly available by World Economic Forum. Recently, they did it in April 2020, and they showed clearly that research, um, just to make uh, clear, it was done on the UK and US audience only. Um, so what happens across uh, when they've been doing that research? We can see that there is a significant growth in the way how the Gen Z is consuming significantly more online video content than before the COVID-19 outbreak, because they've been comparing what was before the COVID and what was during what is it during it so as you can see uh, more than half of them they've indicated that they consume significantly more 51 percent more online videos than before 
If we compare that to the subsequent group of millennials, uh, so as we can see here, that uh, darker orange, almost red color, this is the increased consumptions of across the channels by millennials. As you can see, this red up figure shows much broader spread than before. Uh, the only missing point of the puzzle is none of this. So they increase their consumptions of the medias across all the channels. Uh, still significantly a lot consuming online video, online press, music streaming, and online video streaming. So I, we, we can see that their growth came almost significant in every aspect. This tiny orange line, that shows the comparison on millennials versus the Gen Z. If we go to the next slide, we can see the comparison between Gen X and the baby boomers. So jumping to how the Gen X have changed. Let us have a closer look at that one. We can see that there is a peak for um, increased more um, TV watching than any of the other previous mentioned generation. And they are quite interested as well in the online streaming. If we are to compare that to the last group, what happens with the baby boomers Still, that there is a growth, but that growth is the least. Uh, they show the least increase of consumption of the, of the media in comparison to the other groups. So we can see that they as well shifted online, but not that significantly. The only that is common for everybody is the significant increase in the broadcasted TV. But what we need to consider it is how they consume and what they are looking when uh, going through these medias. We can see on this comparison that across all the generation, they are looking for COVID-19 uh, updates that is common for all of them. And they are listening to the music, which was not that much before. And then what is going to be common for all of them they are looking for entertainment, watching funny videos and looking at, let's say, memes and funny movies. The lower we got on that list, it is more solid information, watching webinars like we are conducting now. Or, of course, the third last from the bottom is looking for holiday destinations. No wonder why. Moreover, what has changed significantly? What we can see that the credibility of different media varies across the channel. You can see that purple dotted line that shows the average. And of course, for example, like WHO website, it's considered to be significantly, uh, let's say, trustworthy. Uh, we can see that, for example, people, they believe to what is written on the news, scientific articles, but with that varies from generation to generation. But what I would like to, um, let's say, emphasize on, look, that word of mouth from family and friends that was so much of an importance before, now it's going far away. So we are looking for the third parties to bring us the credible information. So now let's move on to the next slide how the business should react. Business should react the way how entire society reacted. So the business showed clearly, we need to stay at home and follow social distancing. So that's why this socially responsible campaign with the CSR and staying at home and flattening the curve came into. What you can see here, these are these famous art by McDonald's split or the wheels from Audi that are separated to showcase the social distancing. And all the multinational brands, they try to do some tricks of that kind. For example, Burger King, right? It's like staying home of the Whooper. Of course, the Whooper is now bought. It does just, they are emphasizing staying at home or revised meme logo of Tokyo 2020, practice safe social distancing and this um, let's say, Olympic uh, circles now being separated. All the brands with the subsequent pictures that you can see are following the same example. In the next slide, what you can see, this is um, Coca-Cola making a spread between the letters to make significant, let's say, input on their social distancing or something that is um, very well known in uh, in the region that I live in here in the GCC, it's the timing that promotes, let's say, tourism throughout Dubai. Now it's called time in, right? Not time out. 
as before. Last but not least, four examples of the campaigns. Um, well-known leaflets recognized by everybody from IKEA, Stay Home, or three brands from automotive industry. As you can see, they are following the same pattern. Previously mentioned um, animated uh, advertisement of uh, Audi keeping the distance instead uh, staying together, or Volvo and Jeep following the same manner of advertising now. Right now, the best and safest place it isn't a Volvo or Jeep looking through the bars, let's say through the grill of its mask, right through the garage. I think that uh, not only um, the consumers have changed, brands needed to follow and remain relevant in these uncertain times. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Anna, for a wonderful presentation. So just to summarize Anna's um, presentation, she has highlighted the different consumption of media during this COVID-19 situation and the different uh, consumption media between the different generations uh, moving more for media in terms of video consumption, uh, quite a lot with the Generation X and also the uh, baby boomers who are actually focused more on to the, uh, the broadcast media. And then how companies are reacting to that consumption in terms of their advertising and their marketing campaigns. And she's highlighted a number of examples to show us from Audi, the automobile industry, and also the, the restaurant uh, trade as well. So thank you very much for your presentation, Anna. Thank you all to my panelists, um, to Adil, to uh, Anna, to Carla, uh, and also to Serena for wonderful presentations on the changing situation in terms of our consumption of digital channels in this COVID-19 situation. We will now have um, a number of questions that we can uh, look at. So before we go on to that, I'd just like to highlight that we also have the third webinar which is going to be on the data in our biopersona spring, and that is going to be on the 20th of May 2020. And I hope you can all join us for that too. <laughs> okay. A, a question Are you considering augmented reality for online sales? Questions for Carla. That's from, from Razwan Constantinescu. So I guess that's for uh, the clothes uh, selling process. Uh, uh, are you able to uh, see whether uh, augmented reality might be able to help to improve that consumer experience and you know make it exciting and uh, what it is supposed to be in real life? Yes, that's a great suggestion. We have considered it. Unfortunately, our local market is still learning what augmented reality is about. And so we are going to bring it in. But um, I think you know, right now we're going to focus more on the, the old school experience. Um, just because um, Latin America isn't as digital as the rest of the world yet. So, but it is a great suggestion and we have considered it. It's just the timing isn't, right now we're going to focus more on, on the more, yeah, just emotion, pure emotion and, and um, not any complications that technology might get in the way. Okay, thank you very much, Carla. Uh, there's uh, another question for Hadil. Would you, uh, would you advise us to integrate TikTok into our digital marketing classrooms? What do we need to know about TikTok functionalities and possibilities for advertisers so that strategies can be worked on? Well, thanks for your question. Um, TikTok has uh, some similar products to other social media platforms that you might be familiar with. Um, they have uh, in-feed videos, so any short-form video that can run through a, while a consumer is uh, on the feed, um, that's easy for a brand to do. Just convert to vertical and make something that's catchy, the same style as TikTok uh, videos are. Um, you can do brand takeovers. So as soon as you open the app, it's a, it's a blast of your ad on everyone who opens the app at the same time. So that so the brand takeover is is very similar to like YouTube mastheads and uh, so on. And uh, finally, you can also do lenses. So the same way as Snapchat has uh, lenses for brands that you can create, uh, you can also do a lot of really cool effects and their technology is extremely advanced. 
Um, L'Oreal has done this a lot with the makeup uh, features. Um, so these are the more traditional ones. And then you could also do a lot of things like the, what's known as the hashtag challenge, where you can partner with different users that are popular and influencers to create a hashtag challenge, like a dance move or a certain move. It doesn't even have to be dance. It could be something like more of a tutorial uh, for brands uh, that are that have a different target audience. Um, and uh, partnering with different kind of influencers. A lot of other brands have also done things like uh, UGC content. So they would seed in um, a, a video, uh, your product in some kind of movement or a, a dance, and then the people would pick it up. So it's kind of like a UGC campaign that is seeded in through uh, average users, not necessarily influencers, which is my favorite type of marketing. Um, and some channels have also their own channel that's running on uh, on um, TikTok, like Chipotle, again, another example, who create really cool uh, organic content that sometimes goes viral. So that's the cool thing about TikTok is your chances of going viral are much higher than other uh, platforms. Uh, Mathieu Escudia from France, a question for Hadiou, and um, it would like to know if TikTok is uh, principally a very strong a young audience and how would you adapt the social media if it's not the principal target audience of your company so how would you adapt if it is uh, obviously not in the business that you are in so so this would this would apply to the same thing for any other social media platform it depends on the region demographic so in the uae and the gcc uh, platforms like instagram snapchat and tiktok are extremely popular um but it's not necessarily the same case for other countries and the age group has been changing ever since covid-19 so initially it was just for the younger generation but uh, data is showing that more and more variety of kind of people that are joining the platform uh, for entertainment and beyond entertainment right now because of the audience is joining again this is something that uh, TikTok should be releasing more information about uh, in terms of their target audience for the region. So when you're a marketer and you're working with these kind of uh, tech platforms, they would share the kind of data that you would need for your business. Okay, great stuff. Thank you for that. Uh, just to uh, pick up on some other uh, participants, uh, uh, Serena, you, you had some uh, participants asking whether you also do B2C. I guess uh, you might have some customers for, for the face mask that you're asking for. And uh, if you don't mind sharing, how difficult was it for you to uh, go from, I guess you're doing using paper as a product or as a material, and then you had to use different masks and, uh, you know, was it uh, a long sort of manufacturing process that you had to go through an investment? No, okay, I'll answer the first question first regarding, regarding B2C. Uh, okay, the, the fact that we pivoted our business uh, had some consequences also on our on our buyer personas, which are currently reshaped, getting reshaped. So this will certainly open up some interesting scenarios, uh, also in terms of channels that we want, we may want to use. In is now uh, phase two of the of the COVID nineteen outbreak. We're now recovering here in Italy. We have new uh, companies are opening again. So um, I think in to answer this question, yes, we are not doing fully B two C now. Of course, our core uh, remains B2B, but we are certainly going to launch some initiatives uh, which are more geared towards a B2C audience because of what we did. And to answer your second question, actually, we already printed on fabric before because uh, we don't just print on paper; we print on different materials. So what we did was what we did was pivoting a production line that in the past used to print um, advertising banners, for example, and fabrics. And now we are printing uh, face masks. masks. That's great. Thank you very much, Serena. That's uh, obviously quite a challenging environment for all companies to find that period, but that's that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I've got a question here which is addressed to all panelists, but uh, I think uh, Anna Tarabas, if you don't mind sharing, because you're actually in an in academic in, uh, institution and you're uh, looking at the way that uh, obviously your university evolves as well as uh, everything else around this. And um, how would you think? I uh, so we've got a question from Helen. Uh, Kilkova from the Ukraine and she's asking how would you incorporate TikTok for promoting serious academic universities and I guess that's sort of maybe asking about SP Jane as your school a serious uh, <laughs> business school around the world how does do you use TikTok or have you seen any other universities using TikTok in a good way um, let, let, let me put it this way none of the very reputed universities would rather go for it right I think that Insta is the furthest that so far the reputed institutions are going for uh, but definitely, yes, um, maybe not in the, the direction of a TikTok, but I can see significant 
improvement in the way how universities started to advertise. Uh, plenty of webinars, uh, invitations to master online classes, etc. Right now are visible, and um, as well, uh, very often universities nowadays what they are doing instead of promoting the programs, they are showcasing if they can, for example, to uh, to to showcase the excellence of their faculties of their teachers. So they are using extensively webinars to show it. Um, they started advertising short-term programs instead of um, of the diplomas that they've been offering before, just maybe as a source of additional income. And at the same, what happens, those schools that are blessed with having particular technology, like you mentioned, SPJ, and we, have, we are having technology which is called Engaging Learning Online Platform, uh, which, is, which is a live online classes that is an experience far beyond WebEx or Zoom classes that other universities can promote. Um, definitely this type of a, of a technology, it's, uh, it's being bolded in the campaigns. And of course, all, uh, all campaigns now that I can see, it's, um, it's as well focusing on the student's experience, right? How despite the COVID, uh, the student's experience is not being jeopardized. Because um, we need to change our learning mode. We need to change the way we are teaching, the way we are interacting with the students. And of course, winning out those institutions who are capable of embracing that, uh, that challenge and, and preparing for the impact. I hope that that was the answer that, that the person was looking for. Okay, thank you very much, Anna. That's a brilliant uh, response there. Uh, obviously, I guess it depends obviously on the institution and the ways forward for them all. Uh, okay, Tahir, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Alexey, for the questions. Uh, wonderful questions from our audience um, uh, and attendees today. Um, so I would like to basically, again, once again, thank our panelists uh, for fantastic presentations to Carla, to Anna, to Serena, and to Hadil for giving us an insight into the changing environment of digital marketing in digital channels in this COVID-19 situation. Um, I wish you all the best and please keep safe uh, in this environment. And uh, we look forward to meeting you again on the 20th of May uh, for our third webinar, which is going to be on data. Thank you, take care and look after yourself.